it's back to x. Okay, so you need to translate this very quickly. The rate of change of y with respect to x. So this pretty much just ask you dy dx. Okay, or y dash, or f dash x. So those three things is exactly the same. So it asks you those evaluated at x equals to one. Yeah, however, you see this is a straight line. So evaluated at x equals to 1 equals to evaluated at x equals to any real numbers. Because for a linear line, the slope doesn't change. You see, at this point, the slope is this. Yeah, so the slope is this one, slope is this one, slope is this one, slope is this one. So it doesn't matter where the point is, the slope is the same. So all we need to do is just find out the line equation. Okay? Or you can just directly calculate the slope. So the slope is equals to rise over run. And the slope is equals to rise over run. So the rise is 3, run is 4. Okay? But don't forget this line is decreasing. Okay? So don't forget the negative sign here. So the answer is C. Okay? So the answer is C minus 3 over 4. So the second question, they ask you the value of this limit is, okay. So when you're trying to find any limit, limit question. Yeah, method one, you just directly plug the number in. Yeah, so for example, they ask you limit x approach to two x plus 2. Yeah, so just directly plug the number in and then trying to evaluate that. That will just be 4. Okay, You can directly plug it in. And sometimes okay, the denominator is undefined. Okay, So when the denominator is undefined, you need to get rid of the denominator. Okay, You need to get rid of the denominator. So in this question, you can see when you plug 2 in, the denominator becomes 0. That clearly doesn't work. So you just need to try something else. Okay, so you need to go simplify it first. x approach to 2. On the top part, x squared minus 4 will just be x plus 2, x minus 2. Yeah, and then on the bottom part, 2x minus 4. Okay, so it's 2x minus 2. Yeah, so x minus 2, x minus 2 cancelled. So now... Yeah, when you plug 2 in, there's no restrictions, so it will just be 2 plus 2 all over 2, which give you another 2. Yeah, so the correct answer is B. Okay, yeah. So you might ask me, what if we can't cancel the denominator? What should we do? Okay, yeah. So let's have a look at method 3. Yeah, so sometimes we can't cancel the denominator. So what if it just asks you, limit x approach to 2, 1 on x minus 2. <coughs> or sometimes it asks you something like limit x approach to 2, 1 on x minus 2 squared. Yeah. So so how do we know whether the limit is so what it if it is defined it will have a specific value. If it is undefined then you can never work it out. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. So x approach to 1 on x minus 2. So the first thing is you draw a graph. So limit is defined if limit approach to the left equals to the limit approach to the right. Yeah, so it is only defined when the limit approach to the left equals to limit approach to the right. So let's have a look at this. 1 on x minus 2. Okay. So this is x equals to 2. This is asymptotes, And then you have two branch. Okay, and then we're just trying to see when we approach from the left and then when we approach from the right, whether they are the same thing, right? Yeah, so limit x approach to 2, 1 on x minus 2. Okay, when you approach this from the left, you can see approach this from the left. In the end, it will just be negative infinity, right? It's just negative infinity. However, if you approach it from the right, limit x approach to 2 plus 1 on x minus 2. Yeah, if you approach from the right, you can see it goes to positive infinity. Yeah, the two side is not even the same, so this one is undefined.
Maybe this one is undefined. You can never find the limit value. However, the other one, one on x minus two squared. Uh, this is the truncus we learned before. Right? This the asymptosis again x minus two. However, both sides approach to positive infinity. So you can see the limit approach to the left equals to the limit approach to the right, and they both positive infinity. So this one is defined. Okay, that's just positive infinity. Yeah. Okay, so that's about the limit question. Now let's have a look at question three. Yeah, so x approach to infinity, what does this expression equals to? Okay. And we're going to talk about this next lesson. It's related to rational function as well. Okay. So when you see it's a polynomial over polynomial, okay, so when you see any form which is a polynomial okay, over that over should be a line over another polynomial. Yeah, and now what you do is just divide everything by the highest power. Okay, that always works. So divide everything by the highest power. Okay, if you have any polynomial over another polynomial, just divide everything by the highest power. Yeah, if you finish copying that sentence down, then please type a tool to the Skype chat. Okay. Yeah, so in this case, our highest power, if you just read it through, it's just x squared, right? So we just divide everything by x squared. Yeah. So when you divide everything by x squared, so it's 4 on x squared minus 2x on x squared, and then minus 2 right? on the bottom, 3, and then plus x on x squared minus 1 on x squared. And then there's another thing you should know it with infinity, one over infinity equals to zero, right? One over infinity is zero, yeah. So four on infinity squared, that's zero. Two, yeah, x and x canceled. So two on infinity, this is also zero, yeah, and minus two, and then three plus one on x, one on infinity, that's zero, so this is zero. And then minus one on infinity, that's also zero. So in the end, you can see we're just left with minus 2 over 3. Okay. Yeah. So as x approaches infinity, this will approach to minus 2 over 3, which is d. Okay. Yeah. So we choose d. Okay. Now for question 4. Okay. So for question 4, they just ask you uh, the gradient of seconds through points with coordinate dun -dun 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 on the graph y equals fx where f is differentiable function, which is given by, yeah, so this is a word second, we we'll talked about this before, okay, so if you have any curve, you join in any two points, this is called a chord, okay, so chord is an interval, okay, it has a fixed length, okay, so what's a second? Second is very similar to chord, except you just join in two points, and then you connect a straight line through Okay, so this is a second, and second is a line. It goes infinitely long in both directions. Okay, yeah, so it just ask you the gradient of the second. So the gradient of this line goes through the point three f three six f six, and what is the gradient of this line? Yeah, so if you want to find the gradient of a line, it just equals to y one minus y two, x one minus x two. Right? Yeah, just plug in a number. So it will just be f3 minus f6, 3 minus 6. And then you can just multiply both top and bottom by a negative 1. So it will just be f6 minus f3. And 6 minus 3 will just be 3. And so this is your final form, which is A. Okay. So A is the correct answer. Question 5. So question five is you're trying to derive this from first principle. Again, the first line is something you should remember for first principle, dy over dx equals to limit, h approach to zero, fx plus h minus fx, x plus h minus x, or minus, yeah, x plus h minus x. Yeah. So you should remember this form. Okay. So whenever they ask you to derive anything from first principle, this is 
the line where you should start it. And then the ASCII will select the first line which the error has been made. There is only one error if you just read through the entire question, which is D. Okay. So D is where the error occurs. Yeah, so you probably realized, so on the top part, okay, on the top part, there is nothing wrong. They just took a minus H out. Okay, so the first line is absolutely fine. But the error is, is uh, hidden here. So you have a little H here, but the one you copy it down to the next line, the little H disappeared, right? So there should be an actual little H over there. So that's the only error. Other than that, everything else is fine. There's no more mistakes in this question. So it's D. Question five. The derivative of five minus x squared with respect to x is. Yeah, so for this question, again, you can do it using two methods. Method one, we're just using chain rule. Bring the power down, reduce the power by one, and multiply the derivative inside. And so it's y multiplied by two. 5 minus x multiplied by a negative 1. Okay. And then, so the correct answer will just be c. Yeah. However, okay, because these are just normal polynomial questions, you can just expand them. Okay. Yeah, so y just equals to 25 minus 10x plus x squared. 25 minus 10x plus x squared, just using a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Yeah, so y dash will just be minus 10 plus 2x, which is again minus 2, 5 minus x. Yeah, so you can see using chain rule without using chain rule, you'll get the same answer. So this is method 2. Yeah, so that's just all the questions in the first two pages. Yeah, nothing challenging, just very basic ones. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please ask me now. Or if you understand everything, uh, type a 2 to the Skype chat. We're just going to move on to the next page. Yeah, I'll try to go over them as slow as possible. Uh, make sure you just, yeah, focus and then anything you don't understand, uh, ask me. So question seven, so y equals to four, nine x to the power of four, uh, and the square root, and then they just ask you dy over dx. Uh, so some basic rules you should remember it. If you have y equals to root box, we talk about this so many times, dy over dx, <coughs> I want everyone in the tube would be directly write it down as yeah, two root box multiplied by box derivative. And that's something you should be able to do it without even thinking about it. Yeah, so this y is equals to square root of 4 minus 9x to the power of 4. Yeah, so without thinking about it, you just follow the formula. It's 1 on 2 root 4 minus 9x to the power of 4 multiplied by the derivative inside. So the derivative of 4 minus 9x to the power of 4, 4 becomes 0. Yeah, 9x to the power of 4 brings the power down. So 4 multiplied by 9 is 36. Reduce the power by 1. Okay, x cubed. Yeah, again, you can see there is uh, 36 and then 2, you can cancel it out. So left with minus 18x cubed, 4 minus 9x to the power of 4, okay, square root. And then when you... Yeah, so 1 on square root of box, that's just box to the power of minus a half, right? You can convert this one back into the index form, and it will give you answer E. Hmm. <coughs> okay, so that's question 7. Now let's look at question 8. Yeah, question 8, you can do it using chain rule, or you can do it using product rule, whichever is easier for you. Okay, so let's just try it using both methods. So let's just do it with product rule first. Yeah. Yeah, so remember product rule is you have u and v, the derivative is u dash v plus u v dash. So the derivative of x is 1 and copy v down. 
and then plus u, which is x, multiplied by the derivative of v. Again, we use the same boxing again, right? Root box is one on two root box. Instead, in this case, the box derivative is just one because the derivative of x plus two is just one. So you don't need to worry about that box dash part. That's just one on two square root of x plus two. Yeah, so you just need to bring everything together now. So bring everything together, you need to make sure they have the same denominator. Put a 2 root x plus 2 here. So you need to have a 2, and then this square root just cancelled. It just get cancelled. So we have 2 square root of x plus 2. That's 2x plus 4 plus x. Yeah, so 2x plus x just becomes 3x. So we have 3x plus 4, 2 root x plus 2. Okay, and then looking at all the answers, only e is exactly the same as what we get. Right? So e is the final answer. And I'll just quickly give you a hint of how do you do it just with chain rules. You can put this x inside, right? So you can start with square root of x squared. And square root of x plus 2, multiply these two together, it's square root of x cubed plus 2x squared. Okay, so in this case, you don't need to do product rule again, you just follow a single chain rule, and you can directly get the answer. Okay, yeah. So, Kwai, could you please tell us if we do this one with chain rule, what the answer would be? So what's the derivative of square root of x cubed plus 2x squared? Mm. Yeah, 3x squared plus 4x. 3x squared plus 4x. And you can see uh, down the bottom, they all have a square x, root x squared. You can take it out and then cancel with the top. So this becomes 3x plus 4, 2 root x plus 2. Okay, yeah, so without simplifying, this is a lot more quicker. But whichever you prefer, it okay, doesn't really matter. And now let's look at question 9. So question nine, uh, clearly just product rule, because there's no point to expand them together just directly using product rule. Yeah, so again, the first bracket is your u, the second bracket is your v. Yeah, yeah, so question nine, we have y dash equals two. Yeah, so the derivative of x squared minus one is two x, multiplied by the second bracket, which is one plus x cubed squared, and then copy down the first bracket, the derivative of the second bracket, bring the power down, reduce the power by one, bring the power down, reduce the power by one, just become one, and then multiplied by the derivative inside. So one plus x cubed, the derivative is three x squared. Okay, yeah, so now we get everything ready, and we just need to simplify it. Okay, we just need to simplify it. Okay, so just take out all the common terms first. You can see this is a 1 plus x cubed. There's another 1 plus x cubed. So you can take that out. So it's 1 plus x cubed. Yeah, 2x multiplied by 1 plus x cubed. That is 2x plus 2x to the power 4. Yeah, and then we have x cubed minus 1 is 3x squared. And there's also a 2 here. So 2 multiplied by 3 is 6 x squared multiplied by x squared is x to the power of 4. And then 1 multiplied by x squared will just be x squared. So now we get everything ready. We're just trying to cancel out <coughs> some common terms. So this 2x to the power of 4, 6x to the power of 4 become 8x to the power of 4. And then Oh, sorry. Uh, did I made a... Yeah, I think I probably made a mistake. 2x, 1 plus x cubed. 
x squared minus one. Yeah, you know, did you realize there's a mistake somewhere? Squared. Yeah, so what I did is I take out the one plus x squared and then I just using, oh sorry, I, yeah, so two x multiplied by, yeah, so I take one plus x squared, uh, x cubed out, and then I use two x multiplied by this one plus x cubed, which is two x multiplied by two x to the power of four. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to check. And then, yeah, so those two combined together is eight x to the power of four, and then minus, 6x squared and then plus extra 2x okay yeah and then what we do is we just take an extra two oh we, sorry we can take an extra 2x out yeah so if you take the extra 2x out it just become 2x 4x cubed minus 3x plus 1 okay. yeah so this multiplied by the previous one should be our final answer which is d okay. yeah, so you can see it involved lots of calculations but now of them are that difficult. Okay. Now let's have a look at part 10. Part 10 is again a quotient rule. Okay. Yeah, so you can see there's lots of questions in this yeah, worksheet. You just need to do it step by step. Yeah, so for quotient rule, we said y okay, equals to u dash v minus u v dash divided by v squared. Right. Yeah, so first of all, the derivative of 1 minus square root of one minus one uh, one minus x is one two square root of one minus x but don't forget the derivative inside okay don't forget to multiply no, my, minus one okay, and then multiplied by the denominator okay and then minus numerator multiplied by the derivative of denominator which is two x okay, and then divide by denominator squared which is x to the power of 4. Okay, yeah, so this is your u dash, and this is your v dash. Okay, so just copy everything down properly. Now there are several things we need to do. Yeah. So first of all, you can see this extra x. So this x cancel with that squared, cancel with this x to the power of 4. That's the first thing. And then the second thing, we need to yeah, rationalize that 1, 2, 1 minus root x. So multiply everything by 2 square root of 1 minus x. Yeah. So multiply everything by 2 square root of 1 minus x. Yeah. So the top part, the first part, when you multiply by 2 square root of 1 minus x, this entire thing just gone. So just left with a minus x. Yeah. And then the second part, uh, 2 multiplied by Two become four, and then uh, one minus x root one minus x root one minus x just become one minus x. Yeah, so minus x plus four x become positive three x, positive three x minus four. Yeah, so it just become three x minus four, and then that's the numerator denominator is x cubed two square root of one minus x, so which is part c. So C is the correct answer. And then question 11. The value of the x coordinate on the point on the curve where y equals da 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 where the gradient is 0. Okay, so you want the gradient is 0. So gradient is your slope is dy over dx. Okay, so you want the gradient equals to 0. So you just need to find the gradient. So y dash equals to 6 minus yeah so three over x q uh three over x squared don't do this as a quotient rule okay just turn this into the negative index so it's three x to the power of minus two bring the power down reduce the power by one okay so that's just uh minus six and this minus become plus so plus six x to the power of minus three yeah, yeah so if you want this entire thing equals to zero yeah, yeah so have uh, yeah, so you can cancel the 6 out, so it's 1 plus x, 1 on x cubed equals to 0. Yeah, so 1 equals to minus, minus 1 equals x cubed, x cubed 
you can flip on both sides x cubed equals to minus one x equals to minus one okay yeah, so the final answer is e x equals to minus one yeah if everyone happy with this page could you please type a three to the skype chat if anything you don't understand then please ask okay Now let's look at the next one. Oh yeah, question. You just cube root both sides. The cube root of minus one is still minus one, right? Mm. So question 12, question 12 is the easiest question so far. So all we need to do is we just use chain rule, right? Yeah. So y, you don't need to worry about whether that's fx or whatever. You can just say this is y, two box x to the power, uh, two box to the power four. Yeah. So y dash, you bring the power down, reduce the power by one, multiply by the actual box dash, okay? Yeah. So two to the power of three is eight, 8 multiplied by 4, yeah, yeah. so 2 to the power of 3 is 8, 8 multiplied by 4 is equals to 32, yeah, yeah. so you get y dash equals to 32 uh, box to the power of 3 and then box dash, yeah. so remember your box here, uh, oh sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just missed one more step, uh, so if you just trade this, yeah, this is, yeah, so this should be two box derivative, yeah, two box derivative, multiplied by the derivative inside, which include this two. Yeah, so two box derivative, there is an extra two. Yeah, so two box derivative is two multiplied by box derivative, and then combine these two together at 64. Yeah, so it should be 64 box derivative, box to the power of three. Yeah, so say, is the correct answer. Yeah. Question 13, on the curve gx equals da 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 g dash a equals minus one, find the value of a. So you just do a derivative and then yeah, equate the equations. Yeah. So we have g dash x equals to six x minus one on x squared. Yeah. Yeah, one on x, that's x to the power of minus one. Bring the power down, reduce the power by one. Okay. So you know this whole thing equals to minus one. And then they just ask you to find the value of a. They okay, find the value of a. Yeah, so we're just going to uh, solve this properly. Multiply everything by x squared. Okay, turn this into a quadratic function. So we have, uh, sorry, a cubic function. Yeah, so six x cubed minus one plus x squared equals to zero. Okay, so which is six x cubed plus x squared minus one equals to zero. Yeah, so what you can do, uh, you can plug in the values and then see which one is the same, or you can just directly solve this cubic equation using your graphic calculator. Okay. Yeah, so the coefficient should be six, one and minus one. Yeah, when you solve it, you should get x equals to a third, x equals to minus a half, yeah, and that's it, okay, so that's the two values, x equals to a third, and x equals to minus a half, and we don't really have a third here, yeah, sorry, did I, sorry, I might substitute the minus one plus x squared, yeah, I think I accidentally let me check, <laughs> sorry. Multiply everything by x squared, that's six x cubed minus one minus x squared, positive x squared, even six, one. Oh, sorry, sorry, I put in, yeah, I put this into the wrong calculator. Yeah. Uh, give me a second. So that part is wrong. 
let me just try it again. That's six one zero minus one. Yeah, so x one, oops, x one equals two a half. X two and x three are two complex numbers. Yeah, which is irrelevant. Yeah, so the only positive a values can let this equals to minus one. It's just a half. Yeah, yeah. so this is a half. Yeah, okay, so at which point on the curve the tangent parallel to x axis? Yeah, so you need to think about what's parallel to x axis, what's parallel to y axis. Okay? So if you want to parallel to x, okay, so this is your x axis, right? Parallel to x axis means the slope equals to zero. And sometimes they ask you parallel to y axis, okay, which is goes vertically. Yeah, so parallel to y axis. It's your slope equals to positive or negative infinity. Okay. Yeah. So in this case, as you parallel to x-axis, we'll just say this equals to zero. Yeah. So directly solve it. Y dash equals to three x squared minus six x plus three. Yeah. yeah. So if this equals to zero, and we just have x squared minus two x plus one equals zero x minus 1 all squared equals 0 x equals to 1 x equals to 1 so x at x equals to 1 the tangent will parallel to x axis now let's look at question 15 so the equation of the tangent at x equals to 1 is okay so first of all you need to find the corresponding y value and then you need to find the slope okay? so we're using y minus y zero equals to m x minus x zero yeah so it's a bit of work okay? so at x equals to one the corresponding y value equals two okay? Okay? so plug one in one minus three divided by one which is minus two which is minus two. Yeah, so just from here, you can get rid of few answers. Okay, we haven't worked out slope yet, but you can get rid of few answers. Yeah, so y equals two x is, is impossible because if x equals to one, y should equals to two, not negative two. Okay. C okay, at x equals to one, two minus four is minus two. So C is possible, not sure yet. D, at x equals to one, four x plus two is six. Okay, so D is impossible, and then E also might be possible. Okay, so C and E might be possible. We just need to double check the derivative. And for this kind of derivative, oops, for this kind of the derivative, where y equals x one minus three over x, don't don't use pro uh, quotient rule. Okay, you can see you can just divide this over. Yeah, so y equals to x squared divided by x minus 3 over x. Yeah, so the dual derivative of that is so much easier than doing quotient rule. I just write it down the bottom. Yeah, so y equals to x cubed minus 3 divided by x. Okay, so we'll just simplify it into x squared minus x, 3 minus x, which is x over 3 minus x. So you can see if you try to do a derivative of this, so much easier than you're doing quotient rule. So y dash is equals to one, and then so that's three x to the power of minus one. Bring the power down, right, and then reduce the power by one. Okay. So this is so much easier. And at x equals to one, y dash equals to one plus three over one, which is four. Okay. So you know the slope is four. You don't even need to worry about the tangent equation. Slope is four, so it must be e. Has to be e. Right. Yeah. So this angle question, we we'll talk about it as well. So the angle between the tangent to the graph with the positive x-axis at the point where x equals to a is 135. You just need to read this very carefully with the positive x-axis. So the angle made with the positive x-axis is called tangent. If this is a negative x-axis, you need to use 180 degrees minus that angle. 
Okay, so we'll just directly evaluate. Okay, so first of all, evaluate what's tangent. 135 degrees. Put this in your calculator. Make sure it's a degree mode instead of the radian instead of the radiance mode. Yeah. So let me just change my calculator into degree mode. Come on. Yeah. So you just go tangent 135. It will give you minus one. Okay. Yeah. So you know the slope is equals to minus one. You know y dash equals to minus 1, okay, and you're trying to find x, yeah, so y dash equals to 2x minus 6, 2x minus 6 equals to negative 1, and then you can just easily solve for your x, x equals to 5 over 2, okay. x equals 5 over 2, which is b. <coughs> yeah. Question 7. The equation of the normal to the curve da 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 at the point two one. Okay, so this uh, luckily he's already told you the point. So at x equals to two, y equals to one. Okay, so don't rush into the derivative. You can do a double check first. So here at x equals to two, y equals to one. This equation won't work. Okay, so two plus two is four. It's not zero. Okay, d two x minus two. It's two again. Not zero. It's gone. Okay. 2x equals to y. This looks okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll just leave it here. And then part C. 2 plus 2 minus 4. Okay, this looks okay as well. So those two looks okay so far. And then E. 2 minus 2 minus 4. This is impossible. Okay. So we're just left with C and B. Now we just do a derivative. Okay. And then for y again, use uh yeah, the normal derivative. So y equals to x minus 1 to the power of minus 2. Don't use quotient rule. Okay? Just directly bring the power down and reduce the power by 1. Yeah, and then you plug 1x equals to 2 into this equation. y dash evaluated at x equals to 2 would be minus 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 to the power of anything it's still yeah, so 1 yeah, 1 to the power of anything is still just 1. And then we have the slope equals to <laughs> minus two. I must made a mistake. Hmm. Oh yeah, sorry. This is a normal. Sorry, sorry. I thought we we're doing the tangent. Yeah, thanks, Eva. Yeah, so they're asking you the normal. So the tangent is at minus two. Also, I must make a mistake again. Yeah. So for normal, and uh, yeah, so normal and tangent, k one multiplied by k two equals minus one. So normal slope would just be the negative reciprocal, the negative reciprocal of minus, yeah, min, yeah, it would just be one over, yeah, the negative reciprocal. Okay. So one over minus minus two. That just a half. Yeah, it's a positive a half. Yeah. So slope equals a positive half and goes through the point two one, and it will just be b. It will just be B. Yeah, sorry, I just realized. Oh no, that's fine. Yeah. So it's B. Okay, Y equals to a half X. Slope equals to. Uh, sorry, slope equals to a half. Yeah, let's just try to work out this equation. Okay. Yeah, so slope equals to a half. So we have Y minus 1 equals to a half. <coughs> x minus 2. And so this is a normal equation, and I just simplified. y minus 1 equals to a half x minus 1. Yeah, so uh, <coughs> 1 and minus 1 cancelled. y equals to a half x. So y equals a half x is the same as 2y equals to x. Yeah, so the correct answer is b. Yeah, so that's this page. Now let's look at question 16. They ask you the second derivative. Okay, so x square root of x, again, don't use product rule. Just change this into the power form. Okay, so we have 6x and x to the power of a half, right? So when you have two index together, add them up. So 6x to the power of 3 over 2. You just need to do that. Bring the power down, reduce the power by 1 twice. Okay, so first of all, 
bring the power down, reduce the power by one. And then we just need to do it again. Bring the power down, reduce the power by one. Right. Yeah. So six and four canceled, and this become a two, and this become a twenty-seven. Yeah. So it's twenty-seven over two, x to the power of minus a half. If h equals that, this is twenty-seven over two. Sorry. That's eighteen. Yeah. So we can. Yeah. We're trying to simplify. It. Yeah. We will probably simplify. I think I did it too fast. Let me just check this again. Yeah. So we bring the power down. So six over two. That just three. Three multiplied by three. That's nine. Yeah. It's nine x to the power of a half. And then bring the power down. That's nine over two. Yeah. And then reduce the power by one. That's minus a half. Yeah, so that makes a lot more sense now. Yeah, so the correct answer for this one should be E. Yeah, so 9 over 2 root x. Yeah. And question 19. So gx equals x to the power 14, which is the smallest n for gx, which is a constant. 0 is not a constant, okay? So just like a normal number, it's fine. If you don't want to do like 14's derivative, you just give it a go first, okay? You just say, and yeah, I try gx equals to x squared. A gx equals x squared. Yeah, so the first derivative equals to 2x. Okay, and then the second derivative give you the constant. Okay, the second derivative give you the constant. So x squared, the second derivative give you the constant. x cubed, the third derivative will give you the constant. x to the power of 14, the 14th derivative will give you the constant. Yeah. Yeah, and they ask you the smallest n. Yeah, so if you want the, yeah, so they ask you the smallest n. If you want a constant, n need to be greater than or equal to fourteen. Yeah. yeah. So when n greater than or equal to fifteen, the derivative will just always equals to zero. Okay. And question twenty. So the function da 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 da, da they ask you the decreasing region, right? F dash x less than zero, they just ask you the decreasing region. Yeah, you can plot this graph and then have a look and all you just directly solve that. Yeah. Again, I don't suggest you use product rule, why don't you directly expand it? It's easier. So y equals two. Yeah, so that's twenty x. And then five and five x and two x that's ten x squared. So y dash equals to 20 minus 20x. 20 minus 20x. So less than 0. Yeah, so we just move 20x to the other side. 20 less than 20x. x greater than 1. Yeah, so the decreasing region will just be x greater than 1. The so increasing region would be x less than 1. Yeah, and then question twenty one. They ask you, no, 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 is differentiable for so differentiable. You need to get rid of all the cusp, right? We we'll talk about how to draw absolute value functions. We might as well just revise it once more. Yeah, so if you have y equals to f x, yeah, so it doesn't matter what the curve look like when you took an absolute value. So y equals absolute value of f x. Yeah, so you keep everything above the x-axis x axis exactly the same and then you flip everything below the x-axis right? so the green one after you flip it is the one below the x-axis so you can see how many cusp you create every single time you do a flip you create a cusp yeah, so this one has three cusp if you want it to dif be differentiable you need to get rid of all those cusp okay same here so y equals x squared minus 4 y equals to x squared minus 4. Okay. Yeah, so that's x squared minus 4. And then you do an absolute value. Everything above the x-axis stay the same. Everything below the x-axis, you flip it. Okay. So you see, you create two cusps at 2 and minus 2. Okay. At 2 and minus 2. And then question 21, we just choose uh, D. Okay. We just choose D.
So all the real numbers exclude two and minus two. So be mega careful about their notation here. Okay, you need to do the same thing in the exam. As you can see, exclude two individual points. They use this curly brackets. Okay. My bracket is not as curly, so they use this curly bracket. So curly bracket set. Okay, so real numbers exclude those two points. So this is a collection of points. And if you go real numbers exclude minus to two, okay, if you do the square bracket, this just equals to from minus infinity to two, union two to positive infinity. Okay. Yeah, so those two has completely different meaning. This is exclude a region. This is exclude a point. Okay. Yeah, question twenty two. F dash x is less than zero. So f dash x is less than zero means where the point is decreasing. Right. Yeah, so this is ask you decreasing region. Yeah, so you just directly observe from the graph where it is decreasing. Right. Yeah, so it's initially decreasing. Okay. And then increasing region we don't count. And then decrease again, right? So it's from minus infinity to one and then two to positive infinity, which is A. That's question twenty-two. Well, let's have a look at question twenty-three. Yeah, so they ask you what values of x for the function da 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 da, da is increasing. Yeah, so increasing you need to calculate the derivative one is positive. Yeah, so we need to calculate when f dash x is positive. Yeah, so just trying to get f dash x first. So f dash x equals to derivative of x is 1, yeah, and then minus 4 x minus 1 squared. So this is your f dash x, and you want this entire thing. Oh, yeah, x, yeah, that's minus 2. Thank you. Yeah, and then we're trying to make sure this whole thing is positive. Yeah. So this thing here is positive. Yeah. So 1 is greater than 4x minus 1 to the power of minus 2. Yeah. And then we'll change this negative index uh, into a fraction form. So it's 1 on x minus <coughs> all squared. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll just, yeah, I'll just quickly write this, make sure it's a little bit neater. 4 over x minus 1 squared, which is less than 1. Hmm. And then what we do is we just flip both sides. Okay, we can flip both sides because everything is positive. Okay, otherwise, you can't do that. Yeah, so you just flip the top and bottom, treat this 1 as a 1 over 1. So when you flip it, you need to change the inequality sign. Okay, yeah, because if you think about it, a half is greater than a third, but when you flip it, 2 over 1 is less than 3 over 1. Okay, so when you flip it, you need to change the inequality sign. So when you flip it, this just become x minus 1 squared over 4 is greater than 1. Okay, yeah, and then put two, uh, 4 to the other side, x minus 1 squared is greater than 4. Okay, x minus 1 squared need to be greater than 4. Yeah, so x minus 1. Yeah, so we we'll talked about this one before, right? x greater than 1 squared is greater than 2 squared. Greater than 2 side, less than in the middle. Right? We we'll talked about this last session. Greater than is 2 side, less than is in the middle. Yeah, so x minus 1 would be greater than 2, or x minus 1 is less than minus 2. However, if you have, I'll just quickly write it down in the other side, x minus 1 squared is less than 4. Okay, so less than it would be in the middle. So your solution set x minus 1 would be between minus 2 and 2. Okay, so now you can just solve them properly. So x greater than 3 or x less than minus 1. Okay, so x uh, greater than 3 or x less than minus 1 would be b. So question 23 will choose B. Yeah, so just like inequality, you just do it step by step. 
Okay, and then question twenty four. The set of values which the graph da 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 has a positive gradient is yeah, again. You just need to do it step by step. Question twenty four. Hmm. Yeah, I'll write it just down here. Yeah, I want to simplify this a little bit first. Okay, so this is both squared. I want to combine both squared together. Yeah, x minus three, x plus three. I just x squared minus nine. Right. Yeah, so this will make my life a lot more easier when I put it in this form because I don't want to waste my time doing the product rule. Yeah. So y dash is bring the power down, reduce the power by one, and then multiply by the derivative inside, which is two x. So this is your derivative. Simplify this a little bit. 4x <coughs> cubed. And then minus... So 2, 2x squared, 2x, that's 4x cubed. 2 minus 9, that's minus 18. And then multiply extra 2x, that's minus 36x. So that's your derivative. And then they ask you, which of the set of value which this has a positive gradient? Yeah, so positive gradient is one is cubic function is positive. Now this cubic function is positive. Yeah. So for this cubic function is positive, again, you need to factorize it. You can take a 4 out, and then x plus 3, x minus 3, x. Yeah. So now another inequality question, we'll just use all the through even jump, right? To always start with the top right corner. So label all the roots, minus 3, 0, 3. Okay, yeah, so Start from the top right corner. Greater than zero, you pick the positive region. You pick the positive region. Yeah, so it would just be this region here and this region here. Yeah, so for question 24, we choose B from minus 3 to 0 and 3 to positive infinity, okay, which is B. Okay, so that's how we solve question 24. This is question 23 and question 24, you see, uh, it's just based on the stuff we learned last session about functions. Question 25 is differentiable and continuous, we'll talk about so many times. Okay, so I'll just directly give you the answer. Always true is C. If a function is differentiable, then it's 100% continuous. Okay, so let's just go through A, B, D, and then see what's wrong with that. Okay, so it said, if a function, so this is true, okay. So if a function is discontinuous at that point, then it has no limit. Okay, so discontinuous and limit are not the same. Remember we said the limit, it could be discontinuous, but you could still have a limit. We just talk about one example at the beginning of the tilt, right? Yeah, so x minus 2 squared. Okay, so this one has a limit. The limit is at positive. So the limit at x equals 2 is positive infinity, right? Yeah, so it has a limit. It is not continuous. Yeah, so continuous actually has three conditions, right? We said the limit approach from the left must equal to the limit approach from the right and must equals to the function evaluated at that point. So continuous must satisfy these three conditions. However, if you want the limit to exist, you just need to satisfy those two conditions. So if you satisfy condition one and condition two, the limit is already existed. Okay. And if the limit exists, and then you can evaluate that function at that point, and then it would be continuous. Okay, yeah, so A is absolutely wrong. We just have a counter example here. B, all absolute value functions had at least one point which is not differentiable. Yeah, so we'll talk about it before. Absolute value functions, you just see. Yeah. So absolute value functions, okay, so uh, absolute value functions has a, um, yeah, uh, oops, let me just draw it a little bit above. Yeah, so absolute functions, if you go below the x-axis, okay, then you will at least have one point which is not differentiable. Okay. However, if you absolute value functions with original function already above the x-axis, okay, yeah, so something like y equals x squared plus 1, okay, then there's nothing below the x-axis, so you don't need to do any flip. 
Okay, then it's always differentiable. Okay, then it's always differentiable. Yeah. So all absolute value functions, uh, yeah, sometimes they are differentiable, sometimes they are not differentiable. Uh, it is differentiable if the original function is already above the y-axis. It is not differentiable. Okay, it is not differentiable if your original function has x-intercept. Okay, has x intercept means it go below the x axis means it is not differentiable. Okay, so not differentiable if it has x intercept. Right, part D. If a function is continuous, then it is differentiable. That's not true, right? So it need to be continuous, and then the limit of the derivative from the left, and then the limit of the derivative from the right must be the same. Yeah, so for D, yeah, if we want differentiable, again, you need to have three conditions. So first of all, it must be continuous. And second, the limit approach from the left, the derivative, must equal to the limit approach from the right, also the derivative. And so you need to satisfy all these three conditions to make sure it's differentiable. Yeah, so D is not yeah, D is not true. Yeah, so for example, the absolute value of x squared minus four we talked about before. Right? This is perfectly continuous, but it's not differentiable. Okay? It's not differentiable because the limit at x equals two and x equals minus two, uh, the their derivative is not the same. Okay, and then question 26. Da, 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 da. This piecewise function is continuous at x equals 2. And then what is the k value? Yeah. yeah. So continuous just means limit from the left must equal to limit from the right. You just plug it in, right? Yeah. So the limit from 2 minus, you just use above equation. It's 2 plus 2, 2 minus 1. 2 minus 3, okay, so it's 4, 1 and minus 1 are just minus 4. And then the limit from the right, limit x from the right, you directly plug x into here, so that's just 6 plus k. Okay, so you want minus 4 equals to 6 plus k, so k must equals to negative 10, okay, which is b, okay, which is b. Question 27, question 26, stuff we talked about last lesson again, drawing the derivative graph. Okay. So a part of the derivative fx is showing here, uh, which is original function. Yeah. So this is the derivative graph, okay, and ask you to draw the original graph. Okay. Ask you to draw the original graph. And so if you want to try to, if this is a derivative graph and ask you to try to draw the original graph, okay, increasing positive, decreasing negative, increasing again positive. So B would be a perfect choice. Okay, B would be a perfect choice, but B just the other way around. Okay. And so we can't choose B, we can't choose D. Okay. So this is a derivative. Okay. And then you just need to think about uh, what's going on, okay, what's going on in this ray. So the possibility left is just A, uh, e and C. Okay. Yeah, so let's just have a look at the point before x equals to 1. Okay. So you can see it says, okay, so uh, yeah, so it's everything below, okay, so everything below the x axis means it has a negative slope, right? It has a negative slope. Yeah, so A directly gone. So A has a positive slope here, so A is gone. A is gone. And then it says here, you can see the slope started with very, very, very steep slope. And then dun, 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 just decrease. Okay, dun, 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 just decrease. Yeah, so both C and E looks fine. Yeah, however, for if your original fx looks like E, it has no cusp, everything would be differentiable, right? Yeah, your derivative should be continuous. Like the example one through last yesterday, in the end, yeah, so if the original curve is smooth, then your y dash must be smooth as well, right? 
you need to make sure you have a perfect smooth y dash. However, this y dash is not smooth, and so the correct answer is C. But we can have a look at it again, okay? And think about it, what happened in each part. Yeah, and then you start from positive slope, so suddenly goes to positive slope, and then negative slope. You can say suddenly positive slope, negative slope, and then you reach a maximum, maximum the derivative equals to zero. Okay. And then sudden increase again, sudden positive slope. Okay. So C is the best match. So question 27, you choose C. And then the last question here, question 28. Yeah. So question 28, they ask you on the same set of axes, they ask you to draw the derivative. So given your original function, ask you to draw the derivative function. This is slightly different from the one we practiced yesterday because it has the specific points. You see it has specific points. So you can't just draw like a rough sketch, you need to draw an accurate sketch. Hmm. Yeah. So first of all, you should probably realize uh, at here, there is a cusp. There's a cusp. So this is a cusp. Yeah, so cusp means at this point, it is not differentiable. Okay, at this point, it's not differentiable. Okay. Yeah. And we have a line, which is a decreasing line, goes through the point, minus 5, 2. So we want to find the line slope, just equals to rise over run. We know it's decreasing, so don't forget to add the negative sign here. Yeah, so it's minus 5. Yeah, so at this point, this point is minus 1, 0. Right? And then you just use minus 5, minus 1. So 5 minus 1, and 2 minus, oh sorry, 5 is x. <laughs> sorry, sorry, you just use 2 minus 1, and 5 minus 0. Yeah, yeah. 2 minus, uh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 2 minus 0, 5 minus 1. 2 minus 0, 5 minus 1. Yeah, so that's minus a half. Yeah, so the slope for this line is minus a half. Yeah, so when you draw it, you go minus a half, minus a half, minus a half. Okay, so here should be minus a half. All the way to x equals to minus 1. And then you draw a big circle because it is not differentiable. Okay, because it is not differentiable. And then for this quadratic, okay, for this quadratic, they don't, they didn't really tell you anything. Uh, there's no specific point. You just follow the rules. Yeah, when it's maximum, the slope would be zero. When it's minimum, the slope would be zero. So at one and four, the slope should be zero. Okay, so let's quickly come to here. At one and four, the slope should be zero. Okay, and then yeah. So originally it's increasing. Decreasing reach a non-stationary point of inflection. Right, here is a non-stationary point of inflection. Yeah, so non-stationary point of inflection, you should reach a, so because it's going down, so you should reach a local minimum. Yeah, and then goes up again. Okay, yeah, so a very positive slope and then reach a non-stationary point of inflection. So this is your non-stationary point of inflection and goes up again. Okay. And then just don't forget here, it's not differentiable. So here you need to draw a big circle as well. So when they mark it, it's this straight line, a half, two of the circles, and then these two intersection points. Okay. So the perfect diagram should just look like whatever I have here. So at non-stationary point of inflection, x equals to 2.5. Right. So this is 